Hello there, welcome back. We're on the final stretch of this journey to create our very first instrument using the macro page designer inside of Hellion 6. In this video, we're going to use these envelope parameters and some sliders to create three envelopes, one for amp, one for filter, and one for pitch. So let's go over to the new page. I'm going to use sliders, like I said, so I'm going to a slider menu, and I'm just gonna drag up one slider and place it on the page. I said in earlier videos, it's all about the focus and this has gone into the wrong area. So I'm just using the GUI tree and I'm dragging it down into the right page. Now it's just a matter of moving around and once again, copying and pasting or duplicating. We can take our time getting these right, but I'm just going to rush through this and copy and paste them so that I've got four of them sitting neatly inside of this group. Once I'm happy with the positioning, I can go and duplicate them, and of course they're stacked on top of each other, get out of focus mode, and just drag one of the filters across. And I can just place it there, and of course I can do exactly the same again. So I've got my three sets of four filter banks. One slider or fader for attack, decay, sustain, and release. The four vital ingredients of any envelope. Again, I need to select them all, group the selection, and once they're all in a group, I can see them on top of my page. It's all about repetition. The more times you do this, the more times it'll become second nature to you. The only issue with copying and pasting is that you can kind of jumble things up a little bit and get them out of order. I kind of like to keep these things left to right and top to bottom, so I'm just reorganizing them. And then it's a matter of moving them around and making sure I'm happy with where they're sitting on the page. The envelope parameters are also outside of a folder. So they're sitting up towards the top somewhere. So it's a matter of connecting them and you'll notice that the faders or the sliders move to the middle once you actually connect them to a parameter. And this is really easy. I'm just connecting the pitch. And we're good to go, that was so easy. Now we've got three active filters. An important thing to do here would be to tell people what these envelopes are actually for. So I'm gonna right mouse click and select label. Um, this is the first time we've done this, so first of all I need to select a font. And then I need to give it a label, so put some text in there. Now I can use the positioning inside of the properties to move it left or right, horizontally or vertically. So it's just a matter of deciding exactly where you want that label to go. I'm gonna leave it probably up the top, I think. Of course I need to assign a label or give a label to all three of these envelopes. So I'm sure you're starting to cotton on by now that I can just copy and paste it by holding down Alt or Option. But look what happens now, and that's because my label is inside the group. So I need to go and find that label and let's copy and paste it this way. So you can copy and paste by holding down Alt and Option and moving stuff around inside a group, but we can also copy and paste over in the GUI tree by right mouse clicking and selecting copy and paste. Alternatively, you can use the toolbar along the top to copy, cut and paste as well. I had this idea that I wanted to have a modulation matrix because I love the idea of connecting one parameter to another parameter. So I found one in the browser and to connect the parameters, I'm going to go up into the template because remember these are all templates. So I find the template, click on the E button and now this is another way of connecting parameters. I can right mouse click on something over in the sound editor tab and say assign to macro page, then right mouse click over on the control inside of the template editor and then just say assign to the particular parameter that I'm assigning it. And that's really easy. It's exactly the same as assigning something like a quick command, really. You're linking one parameter to a controller. But the really cool thing for me about having this one row of the modulation matrix is it brings my LFOs or my LFO, or one of them, into play. I could assign two of them if I wanted to. And that means I've got even greater control, or I've got this low frequency oscillator that I can use to control other parameters inside the instrument. So what I'm really doing is controlling different parameters using this low frequency oscillator and different waveforms, which gives us a really unique and classic analog synthesizer sound. 
Lastly, let's add some effects. And this is an important part of this tutorial because if we want to export this to Hellion Sonic or Hellion Sonic SE, we need to make sure we've got the right audio bus section. Hellion Sonic and Hellion Sonic SE don't have as many flexible mixer options as say Hellion 6. So we need to make sure we're not overloading it. They handle a maximum of four layers, which is still quite a lot, but it's not as many as say Hellion 6. So you need to be conscious of that. The other thing is there's four auxiliary buses. Now I'm using effects, so that's okay. Let's go and find our page. And here it is. And over on the right hand side, we can click on the effect. And this is the nice thing about having the sound editor tab down the bottom. You can see the parameters for this effect. And now it's just a matter of once again, finding the controls that you want. And this time, of course, we're going to use the actual sound editor itself to link up these parameters to the controls. Just copying and pasting them there. I've got four controls and let's give it a switch. And this switch will allow us to turn the effect on and off, which is pretty important. Let's give them all a name. When you're good to go, you just right mouse click again on the parameter inside of the sound editor tab and then link the two of them by right mouse clicking on the control. It's so easy. Now there's just a matter of linking the switch parameter, which I'm going up to the actual parameter list and I'm just dragging that straight across. All of my effects on this one audio bus channel are all operational at the moment, which could sound a bit weird. So I'm just gonna go through and mute them for now so I can work with this one particular effect. And let's just check that it's all up and running. And it is, that's all well and good. Except for one thing, <laughs> that I haven't paid attention again to my focus. So you see that I created those knobs out in the main macro page again. So if you do that, don't stress out. You'll see it and you just, you'll realize that you've just put them in the wrong place and it's just a matter of dragging and dropping them. I'd like these effects to be operational in a very similar manner to the oscillators on the first page, meaning they're not really visible when I'm not using them or when they're off. So once again, I'm creating a disabled group and I've got a switch. So it's a matter of, dragging everything that I want or I need to be disabled up into that disabled group. Now giving it a value, which is zero, which remember is one. And now providing that switches outside of the disabled group and I've connected the parameters, I should be right to use that disabled group. I'm copying and pasting again for the next three effects, which means I've got four effects connected. They're all connected to a disabled group and the parameters are all connected to the required effects parameters. So I'm pretty sure that I'm done. There's just the matter of an overall volume control. And I noticed as I was using the effects, the volume was creeping up a fair bit. So I'm adding a knob. I'm putting the knob up in the main macro page. Remember, because we want it to be visible on every page, for the first time now, we're actually working with the audio bus parameters. And I'm just getting the volume, which is at the top of the list and dragging it straight over. And now that one knob is controlling all of the volume and it will be visible on every page. But what I'd really like to have is a meter or some sort of visual representation of the volume itself. So down here, I can find a horizontal meter and just drag it up and I'm gonna place it next to this knob. I could probably think that out a little bit better, but I'm trying to keep things short. And now I drag that volume over into the bus section in the properties, not onto the actual fader into the bus section. Just gonna quickly check all the pages one final time. And then I'm going to go back to the actual main Hallion 6 control panel and make sure that it looks okay there. Just to cut things short, I named each of my labels. You should know how to do that by now. I forgot to put a distortion parameter inside of my filter. So I've done that. And I also added a flex phraser. Let's look at the most important thing, sharing this with the world. You can share it as a program or as a layer. So I'm right mouse clicking on the layer and I'm saying export as Hellion Sonic SE layer preset. Now I'm just choosing a folder to save it into so that I can access it very quickly. And this is important. This is the first step in creating our own library, which we're going to cover in another video. In the meantime, I've dragged this preset up into the first slot and there it is. I made an instrument that can be used in another instrument, or kind of. So it's just testing it all. And now I can go through and start assigning things like quick controls and start making VST presets out of this instrument that's inside of Hellion Sonic. 
so I can start working with the template that I've built. Would I do things differently in hindsight? Sure. Graphically, maybe it's not perfect, but everything's operational and everything's working. So for the time being, I'm quite happy and it's such an easy process. Hey, thanks for joining me on this journey. There's plenty of YouTube videos around here on the VST channel on how you can be more creative in terms of creating sound, manipulating sound, sampling sound, and of course, building your very own instrument. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for stopping by.